Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve merge two binary trees. We are given two binary trees and what we wanna do is imagine that these two binary trees are basically stacked on top of each other or meaning that they are overlapping, meaning that the root nodes of each of these are overlapping onto each other. And with this overlapping definition, what we want to do is then merge these two trees together and merge them together, meaning take each overlapping node, so these one and two, and then add them together to create a new resulting node, three, and basically do that for each of the nodes in the tree. So three plus one is going to be four. And then ultimately we will have a resulting tree that looks like this one. So first let's just visualize what overlapping these two trees would look like. So clearly these two values are going to be overlapping, right? So we'll create a new node with, so we're going to take one plus two, and then that's going to be a new node, right? Now, what about this left child of the root three and one, that's going to be its own node three plus one. And then what about this right child and this right child, right? They're also going to be overlapping. So two plus three. And now let's take a look at the left child of the left child. So the left child of this and the left child of this. Well, you see, there's nothing here. So what are we going to assume is over here? We're going to assume that there's a zero value over here because technically merging a node of five and merging an empty or null node is still going to result in a node, right? You can see in the output, we have a resulting node. So over here, what we're just going to assume is five plus zero because the node over here was null. What about over here, right? There's a missing node in tree one, but the tree two does have a value in that position. It's four. So we're going to do the opposite in that, that case. We're going to assume that there's a zero over here. So zero plus four. And you can see that over here, the left child of this is null, right? And the left child of this, there is no left child, right? So what are we going to assume is over here? Well, we can just assume that there's null, right? Since both of the trees don't have a node there. That's like the base case, right? So we don't have to put anything over here. So instead of just putting null, I'm actually not gonna put anything, right? We can just assume that it's null. And lastly, are we gonna put anything in this position? Well, yes, because there's a seven tree two, but there's nothing in tree one, right? So we're gonna assume that there's a zero there. So zero plus the seven from over here. So this is basically what we're going to do for the merge tree. And if you actually look at the output that they gave us, the example output, you can see that if we actually computed these like one plus two, that's going to be three, three plus one, that's going to be four and so on. Right. So let me just quickly show you how we're going to solve this algorithm recursively. And then I'm going to show you the code. And you can see that we're doing this in O of N time because we're just having to traverse the entire tree of each of the trees that were given. So in actuality, you could say it's n plus m, where you, n is the number of nodes in this tree, m is the number of nodes in this tree. So we are gonna do this recursively, meaning we're gonna start at the root of each node, right? We're gonna merge these two nodes that we're at because they're both non-null. So first we're gonna merge these two nodes, one plus two, and we're gonna create a new tree. We're not gonna merge them in place, right? I'm not gonna take this two and add it to this and replace this with a three. We're actually gonna create a brand new tree. So we're gonna have to create brand new nodes and then put the values that we want in these nodes. So first we're gonna merge these two nodes, one plus two, that's gonna be three, create a new node. Now we wanna fill in the left subtree and the right subtree of this new tree. So let's start with the left subtree. So to do that, we're gonna recursively traverse both of these two trees at the exact same time. So we're, we're now gonna be moving to the left subtree of tree one and the left subtree of tree two. We're traversing them at the exact same time. So now since both of these two nodes are non-null, two plus five, add them together and then create a new node in the position that it belongs, right? The left child of three. 
And next, we're going to continue our recursive traversal for both of these trees. So let's take a look at the left child over here. Well, there's nothing there, right? Let's take a look at the left child over here. There's nothing there. So we don't have to merge these two. That's our base case. Our base case is when both of the nodes in both of the trees are null. So we don't have to put anything over here. What about the right child of both of these? Well, the right child over here is also null. The right child over here is also null. So we don't have to do anything. We don't put any new node over here. So now let's fill in the right subtree of our new tree. So let's go to the right subtree of tree one. We see that there's a four over there. Let's go to the right subtree of tree two. We see there's nothing there. So is this a base case? Are we gonna stop? Well, since we're creating new nodes, no. What we're gonna have to do is assume that there's a zero over here and basically create a copy of this node, right? Because of course, if we take four plus zero, we're just gonna end up with four, right? So we're gonna create a copy of this node. So let's create that four. Now from here, let's take a look at the left subtree of this four. We see there's nothing there. Do we take a look at the left subtree over here? Well, technically no, because null doesn't have a left subtree. So at this point, we're just basically cloning this subtree now. And since there's nothing here, we don't have to put anything as the left child of the four. But we do see we have a right child, right? That's gonna be the next subtree that we look at. There's an eight. Of course, we're gonna assume that there's a zero over here. So we're gonna take eight plus zero and put that in the right subtree over here. Now, again, we're gonna take a look at the left subtree of this eight, and we're gonna see that there's null, there's nothing there, so we don't have to put anything over here. And then we check the right subtree right after we do the left, we see that it does have a right subtree, it's a nine, and since there's nothing in tree two, we're gonna assume again that there's a zero over there. So we're gonna take nine plus zero and put it as the right child of the eight, which is just nine. And of course, the last base case is gonna be that we check the left and right child of nine. Both of them are gonna be null, so we don't have to put anything over here. Now we are done creating our merged tree. This is what our merged tree looks like. We did this in O of n plus m time because we only have to traverse both of our input trees, tree one and tree two. So now let me show you what the code looks like. So let's look at the code. Like I said, we're gonna do this recursively. So we can do this all inside of the one function that we're given because look, we're given two trees, tree one and tree two, and we're gonna be traversing both of them simultaneously. We know that the base case now, we wanna do the base case first because this is a recursive function. The only base case is that if tree one and tree two are null, and when that happens, of course, merging two empty trees is just gonna be null, so we can return null. Now we want to merge the two trees. So let's get the value of tree one, t1.val. Now, all we checked is that both of the trees are not null, but it's possible that one of the trees is null. It's possible that tree one happens to be null. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna only assign t1's val if t1 is non-null. Else, if T1 is null, we'll give it a default value of zero, just like I basically showed in the picture. And the exact same thing could be true of tree two. So for V2, we're gonna put T2's value if T2 is non-null. Otherwise, we're gonna give it a default value of zero. Now, using these two values that we have, we're going to create a new node, let's call it root. So it's gonna be a tree node, and the value that it's gonna have is of course v1 plus v2. So great, now we created a copy of this node. We created a merged, we merged uh, v1 and v2. So now we just have to merge the left and right subtrees, right? So for root.left, I'm gonna merge I wanna merge the tr two trees. I wanna merge T1, the left subtree of T1, and the left subtree of T2, and I wanna assign that to the left subtree of the merged node that we just created, and that's what this recursive call is gonna return. It's gonna merge these two trees and return the result. The only thing we have to check though is, remember T1 possibly could be null, T2 could also possibly be null, and we cannot 
get the left attribute of a null object. So what I'm gonna check is we're only gonna get the left attribute if T1 is not null, else we're gonna default pass in null to this function call. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing with T2's left subtree. So if T2 is non-null, then we pass in the left subtree. Otherwise, we just pass in null. So this is a little bit messy, but I think it makes the code a, a little bit shorter and it's mostly readable what is going on, right? So we're doing, we're merging the left subtrees, right? Recursively and assigning them to the result. Uh, let's do the exact same thing with the right subtrees. So let's take the right subtree of tree one if it's non-null, otherwise we'll pass in null. And let's take t tree two's right subtree if it's non-null. So we took the values of the current uh, nodes that were at, added them together, created a new tree. Then we merged recursively the left and right subtrees of that node, assigned them to the result that we wanted. So we basically filled in exactly what we wanted to do. The only thing left for us to do is return the root. And once we do that, we have basically solved this problem. So let me just run it to prove to you that it works. So it's pretty efficient. The reason why it's not super efficient is if you see in this problem, they want us to merge them into a new binary tree, which is exactly what we did. But there's also a solution where you actually don't have to create a new binary tree. You can actually merge them in place. That solution is faster, but it, I showed you basically the... Uh, actual solution that they wanted. And either way, the time complexity is the same. The time complexity is O of N plus M, where each of these is the size of each of the input trees, right? Because all we're really doing is traversing both of these trees and then adding the values together and putting it into a new tree. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon.